słuchajcie, na tym evencie jesteśmy po raz pierwszy, chociaż Gapę w Łodzi istnieje już od paru lat, również ta część aplikacyjna, która tworzy rozwiązania. E, w dużej gamie tychże rozwiązań, robimy też dużo rozwiązań mobilnych, nie wiem czy wiecie o tym, Można mamy konkurs, tak czy nie? Można tych na prosty, HPS, skąd nazwa, skąd skrót? Chyba. Właśnie, wiem, że Kawa była ciastką. Nazwiska. Nazwiska. A jak to nazwiska? A imiona? Bay i Bill, dobra. A czy wiecie, że od 1 listopada HP siedzieli na dwie inne firmy? Tak? Tak, proszę. To proszę głośno. Od oddzielnie będą rozwiązania tylko i są oddzielnie w Blisko. Prawie bardzo dobrze. Do 4%. Więc tak, z ciekawości, bo pewnie nie wszyscy o tym wiedzą, od 1 listopada HP dzieli się na dwie firmy. To logo niebieskie, które tu widzicie, zostanie i ono dostanie do 12, HP Inc. Tam będą produkty, rozwiązania osobiste, czyli laptopy, komputery domowe albo drukarki. Druga firma, czyli ta druga pozostała część, będzie nazywać się Hewlett Packard Enterprise. HP Enterprise. Będzie inne nowe logo. My wiemy, jak to logo wygląda. Gdzieś pewnie można to logo już wygooglać. Oficjalnie nie mogę Wam powiedzieć i pokazać, bo dopiero od 1 listopada będzie ważne, w słowiu. Taka praca darmowa, z ciekawości możecie wrócić do domu i zobaczyć, jak wygląda nowo logo APN. APN yy, mówiłem o rozwiązaniach mobilnych, bo my robimy tego sporo, nie wszyscy o tym wiedzą, bo HP jest miejsce zwyczaj wyrażone. Brawo, brawo. To jest 90% odpowiedzi, to są drukarki komputery. Słuchajcie, robimy dużo rozwiązań mobilnych. Teraz pytanie, konkurs. Yy, Kod Blik, coś Wam mówi? Płatności mobilne, polski standard płatności, PSP. A, brawo, brawo, brawo Pani. Jak Wasz na imię? Magda. Magda? Tak. Brawo Magda, słuchajcie. E, jest taki bank w Polsce, nie powiem jaki, jeden z większych, może i największy. E, dwa lata temu wdrożyli rozwiązanie mobilne, gdzie można telefony płacić albo wyciągać kasy z banku, no to kojarzycie to? Tylko telefonem. Tam jest kod taki jednorazowy, który się generuje. I teraz inne banki też się dogadały i w Polsce jest taki standard. Yy, niezależnie od tego, w którym banku macie rozwiązanie mobilne, taką płatność mobilną, i to jest chyba 8 czy 9 teraz tych banków, to tam się pojawia kod taki jednorazowy. To jest kod BLIP i HP to rozwiązanie robiło dla tego banku. Więc mamy bardzo fajne wdrożenie i bardzo fajne referencje w takich dziedzinach i branżach finansowych powiązanych z security, autoryzacją, to jest bardzo duże, ciekawe, branżowe rozwiązanie. Także tak troszkę Was zachęcam, żebyście popatrzyli sobie z ciekawości. Yy, pytania jakieś może macie o KP, albo o tematach mobilnych. Jest okazja, żebym coś powiedział, odpowiedział. Jak nie, to dalej będę o kursy wymyślał. Na koniec tu jest nagroda, tu jest nagroda, tu jest maszyna rocująca. Będę potrzebował środka, ale to na końcu Was poproszę o pomoc i rozwasujemy tutaj to pudło, które stoi za mną. Drugie pudło, czyli drugi monitor można wygrać, jest gra na naszym stoisku, bardzo prosto. Więc teoretycznie najprościej pójść, zagrać, zdobyć największe ilość punktów i dziś koło południa, panowie, której kończymy? Tafa. Około 14, ta, która zdobędzie największe ilość punktów, dostaje po prostu ten że monitor, ta polska. Jeszcze ze starym lotem, na Dobra, to jeszcze jeden mały konkurs, bo już chyba chłopaki w blokach startowych, żeby było pan startu. Yy, HP tutaj wchodzi do gdzie ma siedzibę? Na ulicy? Brawo, brawo, bardzo dobrze. Ja nic o tym nie wiem, ale zapraszamy oczywiście. Zapraszamy. Słuchajcie, szukamy nie tylko e, osób chętnych i gotowych, żeby wesprzeć nas w tematach mobilnych, ale też tematy jobowe, dotnetowe, custom development. Mamy też tak naprawdę całą inżynierię oprogramowania. W Łodzi tu jest prawie setka, w Warszawie 600 osób i rośniemy. Chcemy zdobyć 1000 już niedługo. Taki mamy cel, który wydaje się dosyć prosty do zrealizowania. Także tam są też, macie kolegów, znajomych, którzy są dobrzy w SAPie może, albo na przykład w Oracle, albo w Business Intelligence, w innych nowych tematach i technologiach, to tam zachęcajcie, żeby też patrzyli przyjaznym okiem na oferty KP i ewentualnie zgłaszali się do nas. My robimy duże tematy, to są projekty, które są naprawdę drugiego kalibru, gdzie można się dużo nauczyć w tych najnowszych, nowych technologiach, tak naprawdę o tym koncepcie biznesowym, czyli tematy finansowe, bankowe, telekomunikacja na najwyższym światowym poziomie. My pracujemy w Warszawie, czy w Łodzi, robimy projekty dla 
Trzymaliście ze mną z tym drugim wstępem. Odezwę się na koniec filmu losowania. Dziękuję. Okay, thank you, Marek. So let's switch to English now, because this presentation will be in English. Uh, okay, so welcome cadets. It's very early today. Uh, we wake up very early, so apologies for my voice, because I was to pull out from the trenches at 5 o'clock a.m. to uh, come here to you. Okay, uh, so today we will be talking about uh, a very uh, interesting topic. Uh, I promise to limit this business, you know, talks uh, to as much, uh, as, as low as possible. So uh, Marek did a very good introduction to our center. So now focus on the more tech stuff because uh, you are here just for it. Okay, so <coughs> probably we will also talk about some myths that are related to the UX because uh, most of the people consider UX is UI, but this is not necessary to. Okay, so first, let me change the slide, okay. So uh, this is the agenda, uh, probably the first part of this, uh, of this uh, session will be limited uh, and then we will try to do the uh, fifth point I mean the talk about the UX pitfalls and some hands-on session we'll present some, some devices uh, and we'll try to do um, to have this session uh, as long as possible we'll try to, to see how much time uh, we have then there will be a lottery at the end as Marek mentioned, so uh, it's worth to stay here until the very end. Okay, so first let me introduce uh, our team. There are three of us on the slide. Unfortunately, one of our colleagues is still fighting somewhere here on the battlefield, trying to, to park his car. But I'll try, uh, I, I hope he, uh, he will be here in a moment. So first of all, Sebastian, who is our unique suite. So this is uh, the guy who fights for better applications, better UI, better UX uh, every day. Uh, like Miguel is not present here, but will be here in a moment. He, he is our IT architect, and he can do everything from almost anything on the battlefield. So this is very useful uh, role. And myself, I'm team leader under Marek of a very small team of mobile specialists. Uh, so, I'm also partially responsible for all of those apps that uh, Marek mentions. Okay, um, so just go very quickly through this slide because most of this uh, was covered, but we are the sponsor of this conference, as you know, so uh, I have to talk a bit. Uh, we are here at Wuj, in Wuj, right? So, you are very lucky because you are in the, right in the middle of our two big centers in Warsaw and Wrocław. Uh, Wrocław is more business oriented, uh, Warsaw and Łódź are technical ones. We have a lot of specializations, a lot of technologies, mobility is one of them. But if you also like to uh, work on different apps, for example on BI or uh, Big Data, you can also find something for you uh, in our center as well. At the moment we have um, about 600 employees and uh, we serve more than 40 clients worldwide from Poland. Okay. So that was the business talk and now let me ask Seba to say a few words about the UX and bits. Hi everyone. This is Rob Sad, my name is Sebastian Gossman. Developer, designer, and who is related with user experience in HP. Okay, so what is the UX? Who has the answer for this question? One answer for this question, or rather, multiple answers for this question? This is the question to you. What do you mean about user experience? 
What is that? What is that in the web application? Come on. What is that? Using the application. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. But is it all? Yeah. Okay. So we'll go to the next slide, and I will tell you something more about that. How about? Uh, well, but these answers will work. However, from the practice, as you can see, user experience not always uh, comes with the good design and opposite way, so the good design not always comes with good user experience. So, yeah, we have to remember about that, that design is not a user experience. However, you may know this picture because it's in a network. Uh, please change the slide, somehow. Uh, it comes from the USA. However, yeah, this is this is the slide from my uh, from my flat. Yeah, uh, here is my wife, and uh, we yeah we have the same problem. <laughs> so uh, the user, please remember, user experience is not the UI design. It's totally different. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so uh, from the theory, uh, what is the user experience? So these are the, this is related to the context, it's related to the feelings, it's related to the function, it's related to the forms. However, it is my experience of the application, yeah? So if I use the application, do I like it? Do I need to learn how to use the application? Uh, it's really important when you're designing the application uh, to remember about the facts, okay, uh, these guys will, uh, will be like uh, in an age between 15 and, uh, and 20, yeah? You have to remember about this thing. These are not rather technical things. These are rather <laughs> the soft skills, yeah? However, user experience is really related with the technical aspect like designing. Okay, so to summarize this first slide, the interface of the applications of the software is not the solution. As, and as I said, UX is not UI. You have the list of things that are um, that are related with, to the UX, and this is the really a long list of things. Yeah? However, usually people think that user experience is an interface design and visual design. Just wanted to show you that it's not true. Okay, and now we have a part about design challenge. Okay, so from my experience, what is the design challenge for me? Yeah? The first thing I need to know about the users, about the, about the devices, about the application, about the client. Yeah? Yeah. So, three things. First, I need to know who will use it and on which devices. Yeah? So I need to know if the users will use the smartwatches, if they will use the, uh, if they will use the mobile phones, if they will use the desktops, displays, if they will use a huge uh, displays uh, like on the market, for example. Second thing is I need to know how they will input how they will interact with the application, yeah? So, if they will use the keyboards related with, uh, connected with the tablets, if they will use the, uh, the uh, additional options like Touch ID, for example, in uh, iOS, or, the, or they will use, uh, for example, the box to control uh, the application. And the third thing is that I need to know on a which OS system I need to design. 
because in the next slides I will show you that it is really important to remember. Of course, it depends on on the functionalities that are uh, proposed in uh, are designed in uh, in application. However, it's really important to remember about that. And the next design challenge is to know if we can solve the problem with only native app or we can solve it for example with hybrid applications or with just responsive design because I don't see the, the, uh, the reason for creating uh, for creating uh, a really uh, easy to use uh, and, and short application which covers really I know maybe one or two functionalities which I am able to, to create with responsive design. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we need to know at the beginning if the application will have a lot of features which uh, are uh, better solved with the native applications. Or we just need the standard uh, responsive design for covering topics related to displaying just the static content. Yeah. So if you have the web pages, yeah, there is no reason to, to create the native app uh, for for just showing the static content. Yeah. Right now, I will share the microphone to the Rafa because he will tell you something about Android and iOS evolution why we are moving to that part because today we are going to say the differences between, between these, those, these two um, uh, OS systems for mobile phones will not cover at all uh, other design challenges however, maybe yes, in, in one case yeah, but we'll tell you uh, something more about uh, good UX and good pitfall and pitfalls uh, in these two uh, systems. So thank you, Sebastian. It will be short, of course, okay, because probably you know this feature very well, better than me. Um, but these two. Uh, slides we put here on propose because we wanted to show you the evolution. Because especially for the Android, the fragmentation is still high. And you may uh, find the devices with uh, older systems uh, that have some specific features, for example. So, uh, as you see, uh, we presented this uh, in a visual way. So you could uh, find the differences uh, on the home screen, for example. And you see that uh, you can see that the evolution was rather uh, quick. We have a lot of versions, and the differences between the first version and the last version are rather high. I mean, I can remember uh, the devices with the Android system at the very beginning, even without the touch screen. So you can imagine. Now we talk about the Android device, and everyone thinks, okay, it has to. Uh, it uh, needs to have uh, a touch screen. It was not really sure at the, at the beginning. Uh, and obviously, uh, we remember that uh, at the beginning we had, uh, for example, physical buttons, right? Now, uh, especially after the uh, material design entered the, the, the market, these buttons are rather soft buttons. And uh, last but not least, for the Android, uh, most of the uh, vendors uh, slightly modifies the, the original system. So the feeling, the UI, may be quite different than on the, on the other device. So that's the challenge. And probably most of you write apps for the Android because the entry barrier is lower, right? You don't have to buy a Mac to, to develop it. Uh, and because of this fragmentation, there is also a lot of application uh, on the market that are not very good from the UX experience, for example. Uh, for the I iOS, it's slightly different. Uh, 
you can see that this is a more conservative uh, compound. I mean, the only change that you see in the UI, probably, is more apps and some of the apps on the, on the taskbar were replaced by uh, some other here. Uh, of course, there are changes uh, to the physical devices as well. We, we remember that we have uh, Touch ID, for example, in newer devices, and uh, we have an iPhone uh, 6S, which was uh, uh, presented last week, and it has a free detach, for example, feature. So that makes the UX even more complex, because you can imagine the app that will use the, the whole uh, 3D dimension. Okay, but uh, the bottom line here is that if you have an iOS device, uh, probably from the UX pers perspective you are more lucky, because uh, uh, the, 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 the screens look uh, similar, the, devices uh, changes uh, uh, less frequently and uh, the fragmentation is also low, right? Because even as old uh, devices as uh, iPhone 3S can uh, install the newer system, right? I have uh, 3S here on the, um, uh, with, with me and, and I have iOS and I'm installed there. Okay, and this is the, the future. We know that uh, probably uh, in December there will be a new version of Apple TV with the market, so we can start writing the apps uh, right now. And uh, from the UX perspective, that will be a challenge for the iOS developers. Uh, Android evolution is also uh, happening. And uh, we can, for example, think about the uh, smartware and the watches. We have one, maybe we'll present at the end, smartwatch with Android system. And for example, the screen there is RAND. So how, can, how you can create the RAND buttons, for example. That's the challenge. Uh, obviously, you have also uh, less ways to interact with the device. Because usually you wear this watch. You don't look at this uh, every minute, right? Uh, and we have also glass. You know, this is uh, probably uh, something that was presented too early because the market is uh, probably not uh, very mature for this device yet. But this will be probably one way of uh, interacting with the application in the future. Uh, this is probably also very, very well known for you. Uh, there are two schools, I would say. Uh, one prefer iOS system, the other Android. I have both devices, and for Android, as I said, even on quite old um, device, I have the opportunity to, to I have the chance to install the newer system. There is no iOS 9 here yet, but. Uh, you can see that probably the only reason why those users didn't install the, the, the newer system is just because they have, uh, for example, old iPads or old iPhones and they are too, too weak. For example, the CPU is too weak. For the Android, this is a completely different story. Usually the vendors forget about the, uh, the buyers just after they bought the product. So there are only a few vendors that will now publish the, the upgrades to newer system frequently, right? If you want a newer OS, new UX experience, you need to buy a new device. Okay, so that's the probably most interesting part of the story, of this session. We'll try to talk about some pitfalls we are aware of, and uh, present some examples on the second stream, but this is experimental, so forget about, uh, forgive us uh, uh, any mistakes, because we, we are using our uh, own Wi-Fi to, to share the screen, 
And I believe uh, the traffic here is uh, so high that we can have some, um, for example, bottlets and uh, bugs. So if it doesn't work, uh, we, we apologize for that, but we will try to present it. Yeah, just wanted to back to the slide about, uh, about the fragmentation. Uh, the one thing is the uh, well, the one thing is the OS system. But you need to remember that designing for the iOS is very is easier than for Android because you cover uh, the smaller number of devices. Yeah, you know uh, how these devices works. They work simply the same, uh, and you know that. Okay, you have only one company, yeah? So one company, one OS. You don't have to worry about that, okay? The screen will be uh, a little bit smaller, and this will be a little bit bigger. And what I have to do with that, for that application and for that application? For this hardware, and for this hardware, yeah? Mm -hmm. You don't need to cover all of uh, this chain, these topics on the, on the iOS, because you have the smaller number of, of devices you, you need to cover. Yeah? So just to give the, a little bit comments to the fragmentation from the hardware part. Yeah? And okay, uh, so let's talk about the UX pitfalls. Okay, so we'll have uh, five examples. However, there is a bigger number of them. Uh, I chose this which are less related with the uh, UI, rather related with real user experience or, and with the, a little bit with hardware and OS system. However, there is really a lot of uh, user experience with both related to the UI and please remember about them also. Okay, so the first thing that we need to remember is are the buttons. Yeah? You need to remember that in the in the iPhones you've got only one button. Yeah? And this button has a lot of features. Like for example in our 6S uh, in our 6S we have uh, we have a touch ID. Yeah? So I'm able to, uh, to not only uh, unlock my screen with the with my finger without putting any code and swiping. Uh, I'm able to write the application where I have the private folders and they are uh, and the access is uh, uh, related with the with the touch ID. So I need to swipe my finger and then I have the access to the uh, to the my private, my own folder, yeah? So, we can create something like that. And you need to remember that on the Android, you have the hard buttons, so these which uh, are just from the hardware, and the soft buttons. So, uh, on some devices, you don't have the buttons, yeah? So, like my Motorola, yeah? On my Motorola, I don't have any any buttons. This is only the screen. Yeah? No buttons. However, I don't have my Samsung. However, this LG has the hardware button. Yeah? So, uh, just looking at that, you need to remember that, okay, on the Android, I can go back. Yeah? It's easy. Because I enter the key back. I got the home button, which is the same as uh, in the in the uh, in the Apple in the in the iPhones, and I have additional uh, button which show me the list of uh, uh, open applications. It's also uh, able on the on the iPhones. You need to double click. Yeah? However, on the new iPhones, this button have also this patch feature, which is very cool. Uh, okay, uh, so just from that part, we'll go to the next example, which is related to that. 
So on the iOS, you have something like I have stopped swiping. What's that? Well, Ralph, if you could uh, open an application. <laughs> <laughs> and I, money penny <laughs> application. Okay, so let's go for example to the Evernote. Uh, let's select the, for example, notes. And let's go to the test note. Yeah. And if I will, if I will swipe the tab. I will go back, yeah? So, yeah, you need to remember that I will not be able to swipe in a second way. For that, I've got the links, yeah? So, at the Android, I will just click the back button, yeah? So, if you will open yeah, when you restart it. Come on. Yeah, I'm trying to do this. <laughs> it's a lot cheaper. Uh, put uh, the um, 
well, the, the marketing information, so the logo, so the branding into the header. On the iOS, it's not always, uh, I would say, a must. Yeah, having the having a logo, having a title. Well, having a title is, is a must. However, having the logo on the on the on the top uh, element, it's not always the must. But it's, as I said, it's rather related to the uh, to the UI. However, uh, back button and uh, and the menu in the Android in the left uh, top uh, side, left top uh, uh, element is uh, is uh, rather standard, and it's coming just from the many uh, years of of developing the the applications for this both uh, for this both uh, the device. Next thing is the navigation. Okay, so maybe Facebook is not the best. <laughs> Facebook is maybe not the best uh, example because uh, I don't know if you know, but the, the Facebook uh, pushed their own user experience for all of the uh, devices, all of the uh, systems. However, uh, yeah, I think that we see the difference. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a good practice to have the navigation uh, in an iOS system just in the bottom. Also, when you have the functionality links, features links, it's also a good practice to put them here because uh, people using iPhones using them just like this and looking at the at the researchers people using uh, smaller iPhones I mean the S, uh, 6s with smaller uh, screens are using it with one hand so what else uh, Apple did for that iOS if you have a problem with clicking for, at the status and you're probably for example driving a car, <laughs> you can always tap twice for the home button and these are, uh, this is the, I think the great feature of uh, having the ability to click uh, for, uh, for links that are on the top of the application. Okay. Uh, well, for the for the Android, it's rather coming from this uh, menu position, uh, so this uh, hamburger icon position. And uh, the next thing is also related with with the menu and the position, uh, because this usually this uh, menu on the Android uh, will not show on the next layer. It will show. It will just move this card to the right, uh, and you also need to remember that Android menu style is more uh, ha have more things uh, like uh, responsive web design. Yeah, so you need to remember that these menus from the from the responsive sides. Uh, are mostly uh, the same as uh, as in um, uh, Android uh, systems. Yeah. Okay. So last thing is related mostly with the interface, but also with the user experience. You need to remember that for the both systems, we need to. Uh, we need to design different icons. It is well presented in a, uh, in a design uh, guideline uh, for, uh, for Android on the Google site and um, for the iOS on the Apple site. If you are interested in uh, creating the icons and the uh, UI design for the, for example, for the application related to uh, Apple TV, 
is also available, so you are able to just go through that, uh, that guideline. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, you need to you need to remember about that uh, the different sizes of the of the icons and also different sizes of the uh, of the uh, screens. Yeah. So these are the this is the, this is the, the five things that are uh, I think that are the most uh, important in in uh, creating the application just from the user experience way, not only from the UI uh, way. Okay, just to summarize this all things, so user experience, the application for iOS and uh, for the Android. So this is the summary. Do as much as you can, but don't do more than needed. So just looking back at the screen when we uh, had the uh, design challenge, should we use native app, should we use hybrid app, should we use responsive app, uh, so responsive design web applications, you need to remember what topics are you going to cover in your application. Yeah? So there is no need to do something more than client expect. Yeah? So thank you. Right, and um, this is not the this is not the end. Question and answers. Do you have any questions? Hey, come on. Jacko, maybe you have any questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> Where? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Just under the building. <laughs> yeah, near to, near to the building. Yeah, well, uh, if we don't have any questions, uh, then we'll go to the next uh, yeah, part of our presentation, which is lottery. Yay! Mark, can you help? Give it away. What's the matter? 
Keep going, keep going. Więc nie trzeba być super programistą, można po prostu przyjść. 